Our anime begins with our main protagonist world finest assassin taking out mafia group. Our main protagonist killed a few people but left the rest of the group alive. His companion insisted that he kill everyone at once, but he refused to do so. He departed with his partner since the organization had only ordered the killing of the six key members, and it's possible that this was part of their own plan to replace them. However, as they fled, a military drone saw them and notified the border soldiers. But, thanks to his high IQ, they are able to elude detection. After some time, he informs his superiors of his accomplishments while also announcing his retirement from the assassination business and his decision to become a trainer for young assassins. And to help him decide what to do next, his supervisor provided everything he needed, including tickets to Japan. His flight to Japan was hijacked, but in actuality, the pilots were killed and the controls were broken. As a result, he considered making a crash landing, but the organization had meticulously planned to silence him. After being betrayed and killed by his own organization, which he had served for his entire life, his soul was suddenly summoned by a goddess. There, the goddess offers him reincarnation in a world of magic and in a noble assassin family, but he must accept her one task, which is to eliminate the hero of that world. He agreed to the position because he was already dead and had nothing left to lose. The goddess then told him that he would have 18 years to complete her work after being reincarnated. Then the goddess poured all of the world's knowledge and magic, together with the hero's intelligence, into his consciousness. The goddess then reveals that the hero will save the world from the demon king, but he will soon use his power to throw the world into chaos, and the world will be destroyed as a result. However, he learned that hero is unusually talented compared to others and also had 30 skills, although a typical individual can only have 5 skills. The goddess then provides him the highest status a human may have, as well as the ability to choose four of his desired elemental affinities and acquire five random skills that he can use to kill the hero. So the protagonist intends to finish the mission before the age of 18, but the goddess warns him not to because the demon king can only be killed by the hero's hands. After everything was resolved, he was reborn as Lu to Ahada Day, son of Kian and Asli to Ahada Day, into the noble house of assassins. As time goes on, he gains knowledge from the Kian in both hand-to-hand -hand combat and medicine. Obese serving laments its quick expansion Lu underwent surgery to receive mystic eyes, which allow him to see a person's aura as well as distant objects. In addition, Kian set up a magic teacher for Lu to learn from, whose name is Dia. In an attempt to assess Lu's mana while teaching him, Dia used a crystal ball that could hold mana, but Lu's enormous amount of mana caused the ball to explode. As time passed, Lu discovered that one of his chosen skills was spell creation, with which he could create his own spell with the assistance of Dia. However, Dia's stay to teach Lu magic came to an end as time passed. Now, after some time spent hunting, Lu assisted a girl named Tart who was being pursued by wolves. Tart was abandoned by her own family, so Lu decided to take her in because she possesses the ability to use mana. After two years, Lu trained Tart in the same way that Kian trained him, but Tart lacked any special abilities, such as hand-to-hand -hand combat with knives or daggers, the only weapon she was proficient with was a spear. But after watching her for two years, Lu came to the conclusion that Tar is not a spy and is rather a very honest person, contrary to what the Kian had initially believed. Lu was then given his next training task by Kian, who also wanted to test his abilities by having him battle himself. Surprisingly, Lu defeated his father, who was also known as the family's best assassin. Now that he had defeated Kian, Kian determined that Lu could assist him in carrying out assassination tasks because he was confident in Lu's skill. But one day while returning from his job Kian reveals that he has made a forged identity of Lu while he was born as illegal Balor son of a well-known merchant Balor. This is also Lu's final training exercise because he now has to disguise himself as Balor's son in order to learn merchant skills of information gathering and also to set up a trading branch that can gather information on his next target. As the story progresses, we see young Maha working as a tour guide with her friends to make money. But after being abducted, Maha and her pals were sent to an orphanage run by Tehran. From the outside, it appeared to be an orphanage, but upon closer inspection, Tehran was utilizing the young girls who had been abducted to sell them to Nobel in order to brighten their nights. Iliag learned about it and went to the orphanage with Tart to adopt one girl as his sister, which he chose Maha. But the director detained him for three days for preparation but Maha knew that he wanted to sell her to a Nobel and use her himself. Maha tries to escape Tehran after learning that he intended to give her away to a Nobel for one night. But she was apprehended by one of Tehran's henchmen but Lu arrived just in time, 
Lu apprehended both Tehran and his henchmen and saved Maha. As the story progresses, Merchant Balor granted Illage one of his stores to help him launch his new product. In order to expand his new cosmetics company Orna, Illage has a fresh concept, which is to offer moisturizer to peak ladies in Tress to grow his cosmetic business. And Maha came up with the idea to hire her friends for the new cosmetics company because young girls are the ideal models for cosmetics. However, as the business expanded, several trading firms and merchants sought to obtain the moisturizing recipe in any way possible. As his two years of experience gaining came to an end, Illich successfully established himself as a businessman and created a large information network. And to manage his cosmetics firm Orna, Illich appointed Maha as its new head. In order to expand the company under her leadership, Maha intended to purchase a new store in a nearby town. But Illich secretly digged Maha's past that she was the daughter of a businessman from that town. However, Maha's father's right-hand man betrayed him and took over the company. So now she intent to intensify her efforts to overthrow the company through Illich Business Company. Despite being aware that Illich gave his consent, now that his two-year training assignment was over, Lu was able to return home. Lu's accomplishments as a merchant and building an information network astonished Kian. But Kian later admits that the real reason he turned Lu into a merchant was so that he could demonstrate that there was another peaceful way to live than as an assassin. But Lu was determined to be an assassin because of a number of factors, the primary one being his desire to marry Dia. Dia comes from a family of counts, thus Lu wanted his standing to be high enough for him to wed her. Thus, Lu was given his first mission, which was to assassinate a Nobel who had been providing military intelligence to the neighboring kingdom in exchange for narcotics. But Lu made the decision to first speak with him and assess whether or not he truly deserved to be assassinated. For that reason, Lu arrived in town Pierre. There in a deserted alley a girl approached them to sell jam, but after trying it, Lu realized that the jam had been laced with narcotics. But the daughter admits that due to her mother's severe drug addiction, she was forced to sell drugs. Maha also reported that the person behind all of it is Count as Bavencor with whom Lu created a sniper rifle with his spell creation and successfully completed his first mission. As the story progresses, Lu begins to seek divine treasure in order to use it against the hero with the assistance of Maha. Maha managed to obtain information on a divine treasure. Satanta Magnus currently possesses the divine treasure, which is a spear weapon. However, Maha says that a civil war with the neighboring kingdom has broken out and that members of the Dia's family are fighting in it as soldiers. And Satanta Magnus, the wielder of the celestial spear, is a troublemaker in the rebel army. The keeper of the heavenly weapon is after them, so Lu meets Dia to persuade her to go with her family to the capital, but Dia refuses to leave her territory. So Lu was taken out on a date by Dia to help him unwind in order to calm their minds. But when he got home, a badly hurt man showed up at Lu's house and offered to pay them to kill Dia Vicon. Dia's father lost the civil war, and as a result, he gave up most of his money and land to a neighboring kingdom. However, as a result, Dia came to the attention of the nearby kingdom's Nobel laureates. And also because of Dia's beauty and magical prowess, which enable her to make outstanding heir, the kingdom's avaricious nobleman desired to marry her. So Dia's father agreed to their terms, and Dia agreed to refrain from any unnecessary bloodshed. However, the Count's supporters objected to it and even assassinated the envoy sent to take Dia with them. And when the battle broke out as a result, Dia's father dispatched a man to Kian to hire him to kill Dia in order to settle the conflict. But in truth, he intended to pretend that Dia had died in an assassination in order to end the tragedy, and also to save her. At that point, Kian discloses that Esri, his wife, is also a member of the Vicon family, making Dia his cousin. Lu thus agreed to take on the task of saving Dia, and when he arrived in the Vicon land, he discovered that the armies of 1,500 men had already begun the conflict. Lu then began to attack them, which caused the army to become unruly. Therefore, Lu seized the opportunity and entered the palace covertly carrying a dead female soldier body in order to pretend that Dia had died and remove her. However, the owner of the divine spear Satenta suddenly appeared on the battlefield, and even the Lu cannon proved ineffective against him. Because Satenta uses an S rank skill Berserk, which increases the user's power. However, Satenta challenged Lu to a duel. Lu realized he couldn't beat him in a head-to-head -head battle, so he built a metal rod and launched it into space near the orbit. The conflict came to an instantaneous end when a metal rod fell straight on Satenta as it was just getting started. The Avalan Kingdom was at peace after that, but one day Lu learns from Kian that a hero by the name of Brave had finally appeared. So with that, our anime comes to an end. For more new and shortest recaps, 
Please subscribe to the channel and press the notifications button to get the most recent update on the channel until next time.